You hit it? And where's the, where's the mic? What's up? Oh, it's in there. Okay. <laughs> What's up? So, yeah. There we go. Okay. Now we're live. Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to Hanging Out at the Hive. I'm Kate Bullman. She's Mary Wong. We love doing this <laughs> show. Hi, how are you? Someday we'll just get it right, so we're just like, like, excuse. we were too early. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. No one knows what we're talking about. Anyway, so everyone, what's going on in this office right now is a lot of things. The busy beehive. It really is. <laughs> We should take you on a behind the scenes because there's so many things happening and you're getting all ready and prepared mm -hmm. for the Women's Symposium. I cannot believe it's next week. I know. I can't either. This and is insane. I know. And I think it's like everybody always tells me not just to calm down because it will all gel together um, at the end. And it's like the last, what, week before. And everything happens like at the last week. You guys drive me nuts. Because it's like everything happens at the last, yeah, we'll register the last week, everything will happen the last week, and we'll do that. So, but I have to tell you that uh, the people that have been helping me out and the volunteers that have been coming over and helping out, um, we made all the centerpieces, we did all that ourselves. It's going to look so really, pretty. Everything, it, it looks really cute. And, um, you, and the speakers and everything, are, everything's coming together. But we got a very nice compliment yesterday. I was at the Boca luncheon, um, and Nancy Prophet runs a, a luncheon, and she said whoever, the, all the social media and everything that they've been seeing on the, um, everything, uh, they said they were playing a um, Scrabble game, and all of a sudden our, our social media popped up while they were playing their Scrabble game, and they said that's good media. And <laughs> so it made them think about buying a ticket. So. I good. said, good, that's a good thing. So we hope that you're all going to join us on the thing. So we have, uh, and I, I think it's, what, eight days out? Yeah. So. Eight days. Mm -hmm. So I think. Until amazing, amazing happens. <laughs> and I think that's uh, the other thing. A lot of people that I was with yesterday were like, well, again, why should I go? What should I do? And I, and I don't think there's, like, one really great answer for that. I think it's more of the value that you get. For the, it's like why wouldn't you go? It's the reason of of the ability to meet these all the people that you get to meet because every year there's new people that go, mm -hmm. and it's who and and I would say to you it's the ability to meet um, new people and um, what do you want to get out of it? Um, and our guest uh, we we were um, uh, very sad early Saturday morning going on TV. And we got to do some things on that. I know. People were, like, <laughs> calling me. They are like, I saw Mary on TV. I'm like, and, I know. She's fancy now. But I think that the more important thing was is, is the questions that come up is, is what, why do I want to go? What do I do there? And I, what I'm going to say is, is, is the investment piece. It's you're investing in yourself. Mm -hmm. So you figure that's, that's not for me to answer. That's for you to answer. You figure it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just keep it. Well, yeah. it's it's to what do you want to get out of it when you yeah. go? Because it's different. All those speakers have something to offer, and I think that they I I know like what I want to get. So yeah. I know that there's things I want to get out of it. And it's cool too because I feel like there's there are entrepreneurs and business owners. There's a lot of solopreneurs. There are a lot of professionals that have a side hustle. They maybe have a full time job, but they are taking two days out of their life to come to this conference and just to meet different women that are doing things. And so I always look at it whenever I make any kind of investment in a conference or a workshop or anything that takes you out of work and takes and puts you in, you know, taking out of what you're do do for a living, I try to just think about three things and like the one of them is like the people like making those connections like making sure that I walk away with hey if you go to a two-day conference and you make even first of all even one connection if you could make one connection that would change the trajectory of your business and that to me is so mm -hmm. exciting so if you really go and with the idea of like I'm gonna really try to not just meet everyone but ha like build some kind of a relationship with a few of the different people that are maybe at my table or maybe you're hopping around different tables and leave with people who you really think you might be able to potentially collaborate with. 
and having that mindset of it's not about, hey, everyone, listen to me and what I do. It's about, hey, tell me about the projects that you're working on. What are, what are you excited about over the next year so that you can, pro you can provide value to them and then vice versa, those things will happen. So really getting into that mindset of like the connections. Um, and then also the second thing is really from the speakers, even if, again, like you hear what, you're gonna hear a lot of speakers and some of them will really resonate with you and you're just gonna love everything that comes out of their presentation. And others, maybe one thing that they say, just one thing that they say like kind of makes that shift for you or they give you some kind of a resource that can change your, your mm -hmm. business or change your life or change your perspective. And to me, that's what's really cool. I feel like, and that's really up to us to be sitting in that room, really intentional about the people, the information that we're getting and being present and not going just kind of checkboxing it off, going with that 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 thought process of I'm here, I'm all in, <laughs> I'm given this two days like of my full attention and I know that I'm gonna get something out of it because it really is, you know, it's like what they say about anything. Like you get out what you put in. So if you go in just thinking, oh my gosh, I shouldn't be here, I'm so stressed out then yeah, you're not going to have well, an experience. And I'm just going to add to that. One of the other ones that I'm going to add is we have vendors that come in. We don't do a lot of vendors, but we have, um, I think there's 25 uh, vendors that are there. And all of you people that are coming either are business owners or want to be business owners or entrepreneurs or solopreneurs. Well, they might not be speaking, but they are in the business. Mm -hmm. And those business owners um, talk to you about their business but they're great resources to finding out how did you get started? How do you do this? How did you, and they um, are great at doing that and being um, very much a part of the seminar and very much a part of, of, of what they are, of what we're doing. Many of those vendors are, sec they've come back again uh, for another time and we have new ones that are, are coming. So I would say, and we want them to have, be a part of the forum as much as the speakers are yeah. and being involved. Absolutely. And there's a lot of really good prizes. <laughs> lots of prizes, lots of fun things happening. So we are excited. And um, all right, so you you were featured on you got to you got some some good PR. You got oh, some yeah. good press. Oh yeah, a friend. Yes. Thanks to yes. thanks to our our next guest who's coming on, who I'm so excited um, to have join us. I thought, oh my gosh, this is like the perfect week to have yeah. her on to because obviously she's helping get yes. some create some buzz around the Women's Symposium, and this is what she does for her clients. So I know everyone, when we talk about PR and marketing, every business owner wants to know, how can I get in the news? How can I get more eyeballs on what is going on in my business, in my world? And this is hard. It is, because especially now, there's just so much going on. It's like hard to well, get the attention. And I think uh, she'll talk about this. You can't make them pick you up. No. You can't, you, you can't. You gotta spin, spin it. it. You gotta, yeah. So, yeah. But it's hard for us to spin, spin our own one. stuff because we think it's unique Great. in the ways that it's probably not unique. Right. So, without further ado, Melissa Perlman is the founder of Blue Ivy and she's here. Oh, and she's wearing blue. Oh. Ooh. Oh, how appropriate. Hi. Hi. <laughs> So you're probably like used to just being mostly like behind the scenes with your clients and oh, she stuff. Does this too. I know. Well, lately we've been my team has been doing more of your Facebook lives. I saw and all that. your show yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So it is new because I'm so used to for my entire career being behind the scenes, and I will write your messaging, and mm -hmm. I will, you know, uh, tell you what to say and what you should have said, and then when you get on, it's a totally different world. You, yeah. You catch how many ums you say. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that yeah, the, truth? the truth? Yeah. I like being behind the scenes better. Mm -hmm. Yes. But for you guys. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I noticed that so much when I started doing video. I, I can't, I'm like, I can't even listen to myself. Yeah. Watching um, yourself is tough. Oh, yeah. It's, I'm like, what am I doing with my eyebrows? Like, <laughs> weird something happening and I don't even um, care I just yeah, yeah. yeah. I just like this is who I am and this is this is yeah, it it's like, 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 it. It. which is essentially what you need to do when you do video especially these days with everyone having comments about yep. stuff um but I saw I saw that you did your show it's it looked great yeah it looked thanks great. really good 
it is professional. And, yes, yeah, yeah, it did. Our it. team is working on that. Well, we're trying to add that as another component because with public relations, which we'll talk about, as you said, you can't always guarantee it. So it's nice to sometimes have a little bit of something else, whether it's getting our clients on our show, talking about the results, just getting a little bit more of that exposure. And I learned that long ago with social media that part of promoting our clients is not just getting them on CBS 12, but when you're on CBS 12, sharing that segment, sharing the photos on social media, tagging, and it just brings it to a whole new life and yeah. it gets all mm -hmm. new, a new audience. Um, and it's worked for me since, you know, since the beginning of when I started of using social media for, you know, marketing, for advertising, for connecting, networking. Um, so we're trying to do a little, a little more of that. Um, you're not trying. You're yeah. doing. <laughs> you are doing it. No, so we got a lot is, of. Imp I mean that that social that piece for the channel twelve. Yeah. After you, we had the piece where I was doing the interview, but yeah. then then you put it into the little piece where you added all the other stuff, and you put the. Um, the description the of it, description the and, and all. Job, all that. Well, because you know why? So also, because you were on. I don't know if everyone realizes this, but you were on at six thirty a.m. in the morning. Yeah. yeah. And while there's <laughs> plenty of us that are up at six thirty a.m. in the morning, I know Kate is. I am. We're not all watching the news, so you got to repurpose it. So, yeah. and that's why CBS Twelve. They're all for it. They're like, yeah, it's on the morning news, but we're going to post it on our website. Mm -hmm. We're going to post it on our social media, mm -hmm. and please. You know, take it and run with it, mm -hmm. so that it's um, so more people are seeing it. Because yes. I mean, there's thousands watching the news, obviously yes. in the morning, but why not make that hundreds of thousands? But then by middle of day that day and that evening, I got hundreds of likes and yeah. like comments saying, "Oh, I I saw this," and I'm like, "You could die, but that's okay." I was like, right. <laughs> but they saw it on Facebook. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So I was like, "Okay." Because people it's love the media. media. I mean, they just, just yeah. yeah, yeah. I learned that long ago with, when I first started Blue Ivy Communications, I like, you know, for advertising, getting new clients, my best way of getting new clients was posting results. So whether it was like a clip from the Sun Sentinel or a segment like this on my Facebook page, and then I would, you know, put it on my business page, share it on my personal one, and I had people coming out of the woodwork being like, hey, I want that for me and my yes. business. Because there's an allure of being, you know, like locally famous on the news and getting, you know, being covered by the media. It makes you a little bit more legit. It feels good. People see it. Um, so, I mean, that was my greatest way initially of even yeah. advertising. I'm going to also say for, because um, I've known Melissa for many, many years. Like 20. And, yeah. She, <laughs> she was like this big. Uh, yeah. Like you. And, um, and uh, just call me grandma. And so, um, no, no, but no. but I have to say one of the things that I saw the other day when we were doing another event, um, and we did this, this was um, how prepared she was. Because one of the things you want to, at least what I didn't realize is sometimes I just get excited and I go in and I'll go and just talk bad. You should be very prepared <laughs> yeah. because the person interviewing you then has all the control. And you want to make sure that certain points, you, yeah, your, right? So your key message points, points that you're getting them across, right? So could you give some of those tips, like when you go in? Because I think a lot of people think it's really easy to do, and it's not. And so what are like what are the five top key pieces that you want to do if you get the opportunity once you're on? on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So once I mean, if we want to back up a little bit and getting on, yeah, you know, that, yeah, that, that piece that of piece. it. Mm -hmm. So I guess the key parts of public relations is one, you got to be creative. So whatever your business is, if you, if you may think that you're the most exciting thing in the world, or you may think that you're the most boring business in the world, there's always a way to spin it or to come up with some creative component to get the attention of the media. Because it's not advertising, you're not paying for it. So media PR is earned media. So you have to sort of earn it by persuading the reporter, whether it's CBS 12's um, anchor in the morning or the newspaper, persuade them to want to cover you. And why do they want to cover you? Not because they like you, not because like, you know, they, they're, they're thinking they're going to trade. No, they're doing it because they think their readers, their listeners, their viewers are going to be interested and they're going to want to see it and they're going to share it or they're going to follow it more. So the key is coming up with some creative way to get the reporter or the journalist's attention and um, getting them interested in your story so they want to cover you. 
And a great anecdote that I have on that that I, I like to share, and I think I told you this once, but I had a client, and this was a couple of years ago, um, and they were a dry clean delivery client, and you know them. Yeah. Um, and they opened up this business that basically, you know, the dry cleaning, they pick up your dry cleaning from your office or home in a bag, and then they clean, you know, bring it to the dry cleaner, clean it, and then they bring it back, it's delivered on your doorstep. So it's pretty efficient in terms of timing and, and um, cost efficient, time efficient, you don't have to bring it to the dry cleaner, et cetera. But two or three years ago, there were a lot of these dry clean to go type places. It was almost like um, um, serve yourself uh, frozen yogurt. Like they all, you know, they exploded mm -hmm. everywhere. Everywhere you yeah, look, there's so one of them, them, which I enjoy the yogurt. But anyway, so, you know, it's like putting it out there to the media. It wasn't new anymore because there were other ones doing it. So we couldn't really pitch it as, hey, this is a really innovative business idea because there were three others. Now, maybe could we have gone for like the trend that this is the new trend, the dry cleaners are coming to you rather than, that's interesting, but then it's more of an overall piece and you're bringing exposure to the media, so then you're going to get some of your, um, mm -hmm. yeah, your competitors are going to get some of that exposure. So what we ended up doing was we crafted a social media contest that we put it out there just on social media, um, and a couple of media picked it up initially, um, that's asking people to say what they'd rather do with the time saved. So I'd rather be blank than dropping off my dry cleaning. So I'd rather, people were submitting comments like, I'd rather be dancing, I'd rather be walking my dog, I'd rather be running, I'd rather be whatever it was, spending time with family rather than dry cleaning. And automatically by participating in the contest, you were put in the running to win a month of free dry cleaning services. So put it out, it got exposure. Then the Sun Sentinel picked up the contest. So they wrote a whole article and interviewed the owners about this contest going on. And it was all, you know, obviously at the end of the contest it said, and you know, this business is called this and this is how you reach them and, <laughs> and find out more. Mm -hmm. And that got the the article, the media exposure. So sometimes you gotta like take yourself out of it and be like, okay, I'm not gonna get exposure for my business, but maybe there's some other element and then they'll mention it. So um, it, sometimes we try to do that with um, events a lot. Uh -huh. like, you know, even the women's symposium, like mm -hmm. try to get the exposure on, you know, you as the founder of it, of the foundation, mm -hmm. of the changes with the foundation happening over the last year. And then in a little box on the bottom, have them mention, by the way, there's a symposium happening and it's happening May 3rd and 4th and so on. So that's number one. It's just being creative, taking yourself out of it, not assuming that you can just call the local newspaper and be like, hey, I just yeah. <laughs> um, started a law firm and you should cover me. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, what are you doing? Are you giving, you know, are you hosting a free event? Um, are you um, providing um, uh, some unique angle? Mellow Mushroom, a couple of years ago, we did some cool, you know, Mellow Mushroom has been there, great business, but why are they going to be written about? Well, it was um, like a vegan day, National Vegan Day. So we hosted an event and invited all the vegan um, organizations and people that practice that with their food um, and then highlighted the vegan component components of the menu um, or gluten free or what you know it's somehow spinning it in a way that um, it gets the media's attention <clears throat> what um, I just want to add with that because I think it's so great and I feel like it's like anyone can kind of reverse engineer because you it starts with the consumer like mm -hmm. they had to so of course it, you want it to get picked up by the media but they, they the, the drive you guys had to figure out what is the what are people actually going to care about enough to submit yeah like on social media because yeah. especially these days like now with everyone having their like 30-day challenges or asking yes. questions, there's just so yes. much going on yes. it's like it really has to like tug at the heartstrings or yep. something that people mm -hmm. can really get behind yep. to even submit something exactly and so then you have um the idea of then somebody from the media seeing it and i want i would love to hear your thoughts on just how things have changed so much with media because we do have so much exposure to yeah. the news anchors and yep. all the different publicists and, and they're really searching for this kind yep. of stuff because they have to create the great stories. Yeah, exactly. So that's like the second piece. Second piece would be relationships. And that's where, you know, I tell people all the time that you can, there's a lot of public relations you can do on your own. You can pitch, you can call them, you can come up with these creative s stories. Um, and then at the end of the day, why do you hire an agency or why do you work with someone? It's those relationships. So 
with myself and my team, we are talking to the media all the time. So you're sort of like in their face, offering them up ideas for different clients, and then they come to you to say, hey, we're looking for X, Y, Z. Um, and that's like the second part of it, having those key relationships, whether it's following, you know, the reporters that I want to be in touch with and get my clients exposed to on social media, liking what they're posting, being engaged when they're posting, because they all have their own Facebook pages now. Mm -hmm. So not just using them for when you need them, but really making it a partnership and a relationship. And a great example of that is I have a reporter in at the Palm Beach Post that I have such a great relationship with that whether I'm going to him and pitching my clients that are appropriate to him or he's coming to me and saying, hey, I have to write an article on XYZ for next week, who do you have? And regardless if I can meet the needs with a client or if I have to go on Facebook or to my friend groups and be like, hey guys, does anyone know? I will make sure that happens because it's a give and take relationship. Mm -hmm. And you know, reporters are so overwhelmed these days. They right. have, you know, there there's less reporters um, at the news stations or at the. Um, yeah, that was. Yeah. You know, they're all there's many people leaving the business or losing jobs, so there's less of them, but there's just as much coverage happening, and they have to be on it twenty four seven because yeah. not only are they producing a print version or the broadcast, but they're on Facebook Live on the computer, they're doing online stories. So they constantly are in need of engaging stories and they need our help as PR people. So it becomes like a give and take relationship of, of making sure you're helping them and yeah. exactly what you were saying, like make sure you're available to them when they need something. Um, and you know, I, I make a joke about it, but like they call me anytime. I make sure that they know that they can call, email, and I'm available. Whether you know I'm out there, you know, running on A1A. I have my cell phone on me so that I can, <laughs> as weird that's as awesome. it sounds, like pulling it no, up. No, but that's like, great. What do they you need? know? Hey, call Melissa. She's the one. She'll get it done. Yeah, she's your girl. She's your girl. If you need someone, so I no, I love that. And it's um oh my gosh yeah I look at Suzanne Boyd I love her yes. and I'm like she's got like her whole and she she, she on liked us media. On, she yeah. liked us on the page yes yeah oh good she, she liked us on the thing and then I wrote a thank you note to Linda yeah because um in the morning I was holding her dog <laughs> and so Melissa took a picture and sent it back to me but I sent it to her oh, you did? I did and I just said thank you for for That's the funny. more and I just yeah said, Linda thank you. Linda Zaguardo who interviewed Mary um. You know, the station is pretty it's empty not, in the morning. So us. her dog was back in, like, the room with the producers. And the second that we got there, it was in um, <laughs> Mary's arms. Um, and Aww. I was like, at some point, um, we're going to have to like, go on stage. And <laughs> Sparky's going to leave the dog. Here. Oh, my gosh. But, exactly. Uh, but exactly. I said that. Um, but the other part is, is, is I think, too, that um, the, the TV stations and all that are great. But, like, yesterday... Um, one of the other things is is, is the community pages yep. and, and getting that calendar items and, and posts, posts and, and a lot of yeah a lot of times you know we all want to be on TV mm -hmm. or we want the big feature story on the front page and sometimes that's not going to happen because there's so much especially lately I mean South Florida has been national news for the last couple of months. Um, so it's hard to get that front page exposure sometimes. So sometimes you have to be okay with, okay, we're going to get a calendar item. So we're going to, and those are often easier. You're submitting to calendars, community calendars, business calendars, getting it in there. You're submitting photos to society sections to get those picked up either before the event or after the event. Sometimes like the, there are mechanisms that the newspapers have put in place, which is really nice to highlight functions events, people, businesses that don't require a reporter calling you on the phone and doing an extensive mm -hmm. interview or sending a photographer. And sometimes, you know, that's, you got to live with that because they're busy or it doesn't fit in with the timing and you just take advantage of that. And as we were saying before, you just share that on your social media just as much as you would with that segment on CBS or that front page cover on the Sun Sentinel. So you just have to really repurpose the media and yeah. get exposure for it and then it brings more attention yeah I love that I mean repurposing like mm -hmm. content yeah. is the best yeah. way I mean I feel like people say to me all the time you are everywhere you do everything yeah. and I'm like no I don't but it might look like I do because yeah. I happen to do videos yeah a lot so 
But it's it's so funny to me how people just think I'm like way more places than I am. Yeah, and it's like the perfect. I, I I hear that all the time, and it's like you're just utilizing things. You have the content once yep. you have the content, and it's just reutilizing it in different ways. So okay, I know about my business, and it's exciting. So I'm going to put it on my blog, or I'm going to write a newsletter piece for my clients. Right. Or I'm going to um, pitch this to the media in an email, or I'm going to put it in a press release, or I'm going to write a speech about it. I mean, there's like 8 million ways Everywhere. to use, yeah, use messaging, and that doesn't even touch on like your world of the video and every other ways that you can use it. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Mark said, Mar Mary is the dog whisperer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> oh, Valentina said, Mel, you did an amazing job for our business. Yeah. Media. Yes. Yes. That's cute. She does. Valentina's great. Yeah, yeah she is. Nice. It's great. But um, no, it's and, and Belle also has the biggest, biggest heart. Yeah, she, has, she, she does. does. Yeah, yes. I know. Small world, small yeah. world. It is a very small world, right? Mm -hmm. It's true. All mm -hmm. right, so all right, so what are some other? I love the stories that you have. I think that really helps people mm -hmm. generate some ideas of what they could be doing. So. For people that are watching, if they're thinking, okay, like, yes, like, it's my goal to get some, they just want to be getting exposure, even exposure on, you know, maybe even like a podcast or getting yeah. the attention of some influencer in their space. What are some tips that you would say that someone can do, like, immediately? Right now? So I would sit down, look at your business, and figure out how you can make some unique aspect of it. So whatever the business is, I was speaking at um, SCORE the last last month and there was a woman there and she's like oh I have um, a Cajun spice and I invented it and so we were like okay so she wants to get it out there this new bottle of spices and, and what to do about that and so it's you could send the spice to media and be like hey write about it like is this exciting or you could partner with local restaurants and figure out a way to get that spice into their, you know, brand new recipe or their special for the month. Or they have a contest. Or a contest or something. Or um, your the history of where it comes from. Why is this occasion spice that comes from Louisiana? Um, why, why from there? And what's the history of it? And why you created it? And um, then submit it to food blogs, to business people. There's all different angles with that. And it's sort of looking at your business and being like, okay, it's not just a business. I'm a person, so I can get a profile. I'm an entrepreneur. I am um, um, really involved in dogs, and I do this volunteer, at, you know, these volunteer activities on the side, or I'm a runner on the side. So, you know, you got to take it back a little bit and say, who is the entrepreneur behind it? What's the story behind it? How long have you been in business? And then you're sort of looking at the product. So there's the cooking element of it and you pitch that to the restaurant people that cover that if you had partnered or a new business so entrepreneur or a community section where do you live okay you live in Delray Beach well there's a Delray Sun community paper and they like to cover people in their local community is there a nonprofit angle to it so it's sort of um, figuring out what different angles can get the um, interest from media and then cultivating it from there because I think unfortunately people go in with well this is my business and here it is and it's yeah. like oh okay. no, I just want to be in the newspaper yeah like get me in the newspaper well okay um, you know um, like well what angles can we come with are you doing anything exciting like you as a person do you volunteer somewhere? Can we link you up? Can we be more interesting? Is what she's saying. I'm just be kidding. I'm just kidding. I, think, I think it's like <laughs> also. Don't you think like you have to be a little innovative? So I think you do a great job. I've said this many times. She does a great job with coming up with like that question mm -hmm. that people will like. What What is your favorite book to read? Yeah. And how many How many people wrote like to us and said like here's. And so we had our whole summer reading list yeah. already, already, And then right? she'll take that reading list and be like, okay, we asked this question and it becomes a survey. And 80% of the respondents want to or are reading a local South Florida reader this year. Well, that's a pitch because that's interesting. Mm. That's an interesting nugget. Or, or women. Or like women authors. Or they're, oh, how about like 90% of our respondents are reading self-help books. Because yeah. obviously self-help is big. So here are the tips of an R5 recommended self-help books for 
written by women authors and put it out there. By so women for women. Exactly. So it's like coming up with those unique, I mean, stats, surveys, something that's going to grab the attention. I want to say this is why you have a business. Because <laughs> this, well, th because for people that, especially, because I get it, like marketing mm -hmm. and PR, it's like sometimes those un intangible type things, like people see it as yeah. that. Like just the perspective you have, the ability for you to talk to someone's business and then flip and find the story, we're so in it. It's so, you yeah. know, it's like we're yeah, so yeah. in our, you're, we're so in our own world, no, in our own right. businesses. We don't see the really cool spin. So talking to you, like that's why you hire someone like you yeah. to come in. And I feel like you could spin any business just given like, hey, give me 30 minutes and we'll spin. We'll From create outside. a story. Like well, a, and I, I also, right? I also think, yeah. <laughs> 30 minutes and all. Just give me 15 minutes of your time and I'll spin around and get you all. Yeah, together. I'll let you be with her for a minute. <laughs> but, um, no, and it's coming up with that. And then the next piece of it, just so people know what they can do on their own, because there is a lot of it that you yeah. can do on your own. Um, that go and, you know, figure out, read the paper. And that's what media outlets, like I meet with, last week we were meeting with reporters and the week before, and they say, like, read up. You know, you can't just be, like, calling the paper and being like, hey, who do I pitch this to? No, you got to read the paper. I mean, I get, I'm, like, probably one of the only people in Delray Beach that gets, like, the Palm Beach Post, the Sun Sentinel, every magazine, because you got to. Definitely, like, if in your age range, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to read it so that you know, okay, that's interesting. This reporter is covering like a lot of nonprofits and a lot of um, stuff in the religion space. Obviously, this is like what she's writing right now. Let me pitch her on this and then engage with her and say, hey, I read your articles last week about X, Y, and Z. Well, I, them I thought them. you may be interested in meeting my clients because, or if someone's writing it for themselves, meeting me. I read this article you wrote about X, Y, Z. What about me? And you got to just keep it kind. You can't be like, hey, you wrote about my competitor. You got to write about me. Right. No, that's no, a no-no. No. Yeah, no. Be nice yeah. and reach out to them. And guess what? All of their email addresses, you can find them on Google. Yes, like agencies like myself who use the service, that makes it a little bit easier to find their contact information.